This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial. Again this week we're going to take a look at another advanced lesson and we're going to get back to basics next week with continuing our look at bins, so stay tuned for that if you're just getting started with Avid Media Composer. Now this week's tutorial is actually based on an email that I got from a viewer. It's from Francis and he says, hello, I have a question about something that I wrestle with on almost every project I work on. A lot of the footage we use is archival footage, for example, campus footage from the 1950s. We use Avid Media Composer 8 on the ISIS system. All of our projects are 1920 by 1080 i HD at 59.94. Now that's not frames per second, that's fields per second, so they are working at 29.97 frames per second. When we use the standard definition 4x3 footage, my boss and some clients like to keep the footage stretched to fill the 16x9 frame. Now for me, I actually don't prefer to have that. I actually would prefer to have the pillar box, but that's okay. Let's keep going. And it's funny because he actually says, I prefer the side black pillars or pillar box in using the reformat tool because I feel it's the least distracting while maintaining the correct aspect ratio. But is there a way to make the 4x3 footage fill the 16x9 frame but not have it be distorted or stretched? Would pan and scan work? If so, do you have a tutorial on using pan and scan or is the new frame flex helpful for this situation? I would like a simple solution to make the footage fill the window but maintain the proper aspect ratio. Any suggestions you have would be greatly appreciated. Sincerely, Francis. Well, Francis, don't worry. In this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how you can take that pesky 4x3 aspect ratio footage and get it into a 16x9 framed timeline and have it set up in a few different ways so that you can tailor it for whatever need you might happen to want it for. Okay, now I won't say it's really a short introduction, but let's get into Avid Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. It's important for me to point out as always that we are using the most recent version of Media Composer, version 8.2. And what I have here is I have a standard definition clip in a timeline. Nothing fancy. This actually kind of looks like some archival footage. Looks like it came off a VHS tape here. And what we want to do is we want to take this and we want to drop it into a 16 by 9 timeline. I think what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to grab some basketball footage here. Now this footage is all 16 by 9. It doesn't even really matter how much of it we grab. We're just going to grab, sure, we'll just grab all of it. Then we'll just get, we'll say hypothetically that we're just going to cut to this next shot uh, after our slam dunk. So let's do the first step of the process, which is to switch over to a 16 by 9 timeline HD. To do that, what we're going to do is we're going to switch the format to be not 30i. We're going to switch that to be 1080i 5994. Now what's important to keep in mind is that as soon as I do that, we've now taken that timeline that was standard def and we've now converted it to be 1920 by 1080. You'll see if I take this clip and I drop it in here. This clip is now telling me that it's normal. It's uh, basically the same uh, raster size and frame rate and everything of the sequence. And this clip that's behind it now, of course, I've called it SD footage. But if I really wanted to know what was going on, the easiest way for me to figure out what is going on with any of the clips in my timeline based on their color is to simply navigate down to the fast menu here and to come up to the clip color option. And you'll see in here, I'm now given a visual representation of what all the different colors of the clips might be in my timeline and what they represent. Now you'll see, you might think that this is a proxy, but it's actually not a bright enough yellow. It's actually telling me that this is either an HD slash SD clip. So what that basically means is that if I have an HD timeline that this clip of its yellow means that it's SD. And on the flip side, if we switch back to a 30i project, you'll see this clip now switches to be that yellow color because we're now in a standard definition timeline with this HD clip in there. Okay, let me just switch back to the 1080i 5994 timeline because that's really what we're gonna be working with. Now you'll see that we have the problem that Francis had originally stated. 
we have the clip it's now stretched to fill the frame and this is not what we want now we're going to talk about this in two different situations the first situation we're going to talk about is pre-version 8 okay so pre-version 8 now i don't remember if this was the way it was in version 7 now someone will have to you know refresh my memory i'm sure i'll get emails about this but it was definitely like this in 6 if i took a clip a standard f clip and had it in an hd timeline any adjustments that I wanted to make to it, I had to do using effects, okay? So let's use that example first. Okay, so let's say I wanna get in and I wanna do the first example, which would be to pillar box this footage. How would we go about doing that? Well, it's actually very simple. What I'm gonna do is simply hit Command and 8 on the Mac, Control and 8 on Windows. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna navigate all the way down to the bottom here in the effects uh, palette, right down here to the reformat option, which is right here. Now inside here, you'll see, that I have the option for a 14 by 9 letterbox, a 16 by 9 letterbox, or a 4, 4 by 3 sidebar. Now that's more commonly referred to as a pillar box. So let's simply take that, drag and drop, and there we go. This footage is now pillar boxed, which for me, to be perfectly honest, this is what I would expect to see you know, in a production. There's really only two things that I would expect to see. One would be a pillar box. The second one would be is that if we zoomed in on the footage. To stretch the footage out to me always just looks incorrectly. Now I know there's people out there that obviously do that and I'm not trying to, you know, knock them back a peg or anything like that. But for me it always just looks wrong because I'm a bit of a perfectionist, okay? But like I said, now this here is one example. Now what's important to keep in mind is that by me doing this, I can't actually put anything in. So for example, I can't put any clip in behind this and expect to be able to see through the pillar boxing. You'll see if I go to the second layer here. This is just black. It's not like this is a crop effect, like a 3D warp effect, where I've adjusted the scale of this and I can see in behind it. If you wanted to do that, you'd have to use the 3D warp effect. Okay, so let's just take this and put this back. So that is one example right there. So what is the other example? The other example would be to do a quote unquote pan and scan. Now in this case, it's not really a pan and scan because we're taking 4x3 footage and put it into a 16x9 timeline. Pan and scan actually works the other way. What we actually want to do is we want to zoom in on this image to remove the black bars on the left and on the right. So how would we go about doing that? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove that effect. And believe it or not, what we actually do want to do is use the pan and scan effect. All I'm going to do is simply take it, drag it and drop it down onto my clip just like such. Now you'll see as soon as I do, nothing has happened. And the reason that nothing has happened is because I really haven't told the effect what I want it to do yet. So all I'm going to do is simply step into effects mode. You'll see that right at the top we have the aspect ratios. Okay. Well, the first aspect ratio is saying, well, what is the source that you're coming from? You'll see that I have 133, which is 4 by 3. I've got 166, you know, 16 by 9, 185, 235. So we have a lot of options in here specifically for working with HD footage in SD timelines. Okay. But for us, we're just dealing with 4 by 3. And what we're doing is we're actually going at it in the opposite. If I was going from HD to SD, we would come into the source, set that to be something like 16 by 9, and we'd have the target here set to be 4 by 3. We're going to reverse that. What we want to do is we want to leave the source as being 4 by 3, and we want to make the target 16 by 9. Now, as soon as I do, you're going to notice these bars appear across the screen. That's okay, don't worry about it, because as soon as I step out of the effects mode by simply hitting Y on the keyboard, you're going to notice now what has happened is, is that we've actually zoomed in on this shot. This shot now looks like what it should look like. And let me give you a bit of a visual representation of what I'm talking about here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to paste it onto the topmost layer. I'm just going to remove that effect and let's put that 4x3 sidebar on here again. Okay? So take a look. There's the sidebar and there it is zoomed in to remove that sidebar. So basically these two setups here, in most cases if you're putting SD into an HD timeline, are what you're going to use. Now like I said, I don't remember if this is the case in version 7 just because it was a little bit of a while ago since I've used version 7, uh, but you can always fall back on this. Pre-version 7, I know for a fact, you will need to use this technique. Now, with the sort of inclusion of frame flex into Media Composer now, we now have a bit of a different way that we can actually do this without actually having to apply an effect at all. Now, one thing I should also point out is that these are real-time effects. I could just come in and hit play, and there we go. No rendering required. 
Okay, but what we're going to do is we're going to remove this topmost layer here. I'm just going to remove that here. And you're going to notice that I have a green dot on this shot. Now, in many cases, what people think the green dot means is that it means that this you know, shot might be a different frame rate or something like that. But these days, what that green dot also represents is the fact that this shot has frame flex applied to it. You'll see right there. Now, as soon as I step in, you're going to notice that the frame zooms back so that it fits the entire uh, 16 by 9 window here. And I have the black box or the pillar boxing on the left and on the right. Now I could go through all of these parameters here and tell you what they do, but I'm not going to do that because in this case we just need to do something very simple. We need to choose what option we want to have. Now if I step out of effects mode with frame flex applied, everything is still stretched. Well I wonder why that is. Well if I come back into effects mode into the frame flex options, you'll see right down here at the bottom the reformat option is to stretch. I'm going to drop that down. I'm going to switch it to be pillar box. Now you're going to notice that nothing happens on my screen here. But over here in the preview window, it immediately updated to pillar box. And if I step out of effects mode, I now have this shot pillar boxed without having to apply an effect to it. And of course, if I step back in, I do have a couple more options, one of which is being center cropped or center and keep the size. You'll see the difference. Here's center cropped. There we go. Now, how can I tell that this now is actually doing the proper pan and scan? Well, I mean, it's not really pan and scan, but the, the proper zoom in on our shot to make it look the way that it should? Well, it's very simple. If I head back into the effects editor, you'll remember I told you in the preview window, as we update our reformat, it's actually showing it to us. And this is the way that it looked when it was stretched. And this is the way it looks when it's center cropped, which is exactly what we would want. We want to have it zoomed in, cropping off the top and the bottom, to fill the entire frame. So you can see that using Media Composer 8.2 gives you a whole new world of options, one of which being frame flex, to really be able to get in and format your footage exactly the way you need it so it always looks correct in any timeline you happen to drop it in. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor, Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase, including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail. Dot com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.